Computer viruses have become so prevalent on our networks today. It's one of the biggest attack vectors that the bad guys use to get into our systems. It goes right through our firewalls, right into your email inbox, and now you're infected with this virus. Viruses are types of malware that are simply piggybacked along with the executables that we would normally use. So you don't have to launch a virus. You simply run the programs you normally run. And if they're infected with the virus, now the virus can infect someone else. You see this a lot when people share USB drives and they're infecting the drive. And as you move the drive from machine to machine, the virus is hopping off and infecting everything else that's on that particular computer. It may also replicate itself using the network that's plugged in, going off to your file system, your shared files, infecting those files so that if anybody ever accesses or runs executables on the shared drive, they're now infecting their system as well. Some viruses out there might not cause problems, although the vast majority of them are there these days to cause some type of issue to your operating system or your file system and disrupt the communication that's on your network. It's very common these days to see an antivirus application running on every single computer we would connect to. There are thousands and thousands of new viruses that are coming out every week. So it's very important that we constantly update our antivirus software every day and make sure that it has all of the latest signatures. Because by the time tomorrow comes along, there's another few thousand signatures that we'll need. There are many different types of viruses. A common one is a boot sector virus. It gets on the boot sector of your computer Every time you start your computer, the virus is there to start up along with the boot sector that's on your hard drive. You can scan your operating system. You won't even see it. The virus is held on the boot sector itself. Even if you were able to clean off everything that manifests itself in your operating system, the next time you boot your computer, you've reinfected yourself. One of the more common viruses you'll see are program viruses. They are connected to some type of application. Maybe it's an executable that somebody's sending through the internet to you. Maybe it's an executable you're running on your machine or on a shared file server. That's a great place for a virus to piggyback itself because it becomes part of the application. A virus can't infect a machine unless it executes. And by piggybacking itself on an executable, you've now got a way to spread that virus somewhere else. You'll see script viruses being used in operating systems that can run those scripts, or even in applications like browsers that might have scripts that execute. The bad guys will write the scripts to take advantage of a vulnerability in the application or a vulnerability in the operating system. Another type of virus to look out for, which is very similar to the script virus, is a macro virus. This is one where the bad guys are creating macros that will work inside of your spreadsheets, inside of your word processing documents, and you just think you're opening up a normal spreadsheet or word processing document. Who's to think that there would be something bad inside of that spreadsheet that was emailed to you? That's exactly what the bad guys want you to do because that macro will execute as soon as you open up that spreadsheet. A relatively uncommon virus type, but one that can be very powerful, is the multipartite virus, where there are multiple viruses working together to gain access to your system. Those can be very, very complex, but they're very powerful when all used together. A worm is a virus that now can live on its own. It doesn't need you to run an application. It doesn't need you to click anything. It doesn't have to connect itself to any other part of your system. It can now roam about the network all on its own. It doesn't need you to move back and forth between different systems. It doesn't need you to put in a USB drive. It's self-replicating. And it now uses your network as a method of moving between all of the systems. And because of that, it is one that can take care of a system in a network very quickly can make things very bad for you. And so one particular worm on a network might infect many machines in just a matter of minutes. Some worms that have traversed the internet have infected massive number of devices in less than an hour. So you can obviously see this is a very, very bad type of virus to be infected with. There was one type of worm where we even tried to make it good. It was called Natchi, where we were trying to patch different pieces on your computer 
to restrict other worms from accessing your device. Perhaps not the best way to go about patching your system. It's really up to you to make sure your system is up to date. But it was an interesting experiment nonetheless. Usually, you would have some type of firewall, some type of intrusion detection or intrusion prevention system in place that could identify when these types of worms are coming across the network. That way, you can stop them out on the internet. They'll never come inside your network because you're preventing them from coming inside with your intrusion prevention system. Some worms take advantage of different kinds of vulnerabilities. And then some worms take advantage of every possible vulnerability they can. One good example of that is Conficker. It was a worm that became extremely prevalent primarily because it looked for so many different ways to get into a system. It looked for computers that had shares that were made available on the network that had no password or weak passwords associated with them. That was a great place to get onto a system. Another extremely common way to move across different computers is it would infect USB drives. And as you move the USB drive around, it infected those systems with Conficker. If you did not have the latest security updates, Conficker went through a series of vulnerability checks to see if it could somehow find a way in on the systems that weren't patched. And even the times when you had an open network share, that obviously when there's no password, that makes it extremely easy for a worm to get onto your system and then begin doing whatever it needs to do. It's obvious these days why we need antivirus software, anti-malware software, and these additional security devices and appliances on our network to make sure we're not going to be infected with those viruses or those worms.